good afternoon and welcome to Alexandra Palace. You hardly need me to remind you that Shushanova and Silavash is a pretty hard act to follow, but things move on after the Olympics and already we're looking ahead to the European and the World Championships next year when who knows, a different set of names might be on our lips and they don't have to be Russian, do they? Well, 10 nations from the Italians to the Chinese to the Americans are competing in the last major tournament of the year, the Kraft International. Star billing goes to Oksana Emelianchik from the Soviet Union, deprived of her chance in Seoul by an untimely injury, but dazzling enough to have shared the world title with Shushkanova three years ago. Lisa Grayson's Britain's number two. She missed the title by five hundredths of a point. And carrying British hopes in the men's section is James May from Bristol, a former junior champion who now holds the national vault title. And illuminating the proceedings with her wit and wisdom and charm and charisma is Suzanne Dando. Glad to have you. You weren't a bad mover yourself on your day, were you? That's equally kind, thank you. What do you think of the performances you've seen so far? Oh, it's a very, very high standard. I mean, Monica was saying earlier that she feels it's like a little mini Olympics. It really is a good standard. It's nice to see that we're attracting that amount of talent from all over the world into England. And as we'll see in a moment, the Brits aren't doing too badly. But what we'll do first is have a look at the highlights of the competition so far, particularly... Here we have our own girl, Lisa Grayson. Um, she's had a bit of a disappointing year. She missed, just missed the Olympics, just missed the British title, but she pulled out a very good vault here. 9.55 she scored for that, so she should be happy with that. It's a good start to, to an international competition. In contrast, Oksana Emelianovic from uh, Russia that's didn't okay. start very well, but improved here. She did. She is strong on bars. She's usually a very consistent gymnast. She has a lot of originality in her bar routine. As you said, she unfortunately had a bad vault, uh, which is unusual for her, but she pulled it back with a very good bar routine, and that's obviously put her in the best position. Well, she should be 9.6 for that, but yeah. uh, 9.8 for this one from Iveta Polakova from Czechoslovakia. Yeah, I think we're all, right, all quite surprised. I mean, with the nice six that Amelia Ancek got, this girl really did do a fabulous routine. Uh, everything was executed perfectly, and that's what the judge was looking for. Every handstand was met, and very tight and tension in, in the routine, and she landed this perfectly, and she looks very happy. Isn't it nice to see her smiling? And well, she might, Suzanne, because at the halfway stage, there she is in the lead, with Lisa Grayson look only point four behind. That is very encouraging, and very encouraging for Lisa, too, to be up there after you know the halfway stage to be in such a good position let's Very not forget uh, Lorna Mannering in her first big international there in right. fifth place here we go with the men now with Gennady Zadarozhny <laughs> in the lead and Fang Min the two gentlemen we've seen but look who's third that's again it's so encouraging to see all our British gymnasts in the top five um, as you can see David and James of there I mean they're very close together as well but um, I agree with John Atkinson that David Cox is going to be a very outstanding future gymnast all right Suzanne thank you very much well here we go live then with the leader Iveta Polakova and let's join our commentators John Taylor and Monica Phelps over to you Iveta Polakova from Czechoslovakia dominating this competition so far 17th in the Olympic Games really world-class there 9.7 followed by 9.8 on asymmetric bars and going very steadily and with a lot of virtuosity here on the beam so far Monica Yes, a very dedicated gymnast. She's been here from warm-up and she looked a winner all the way with her attitude. <laughs> concentrating on every detail. Been particularly needing concentration, but there it lapsed. She should have had two moves linked together and she obviously failed the second one. looks like that she's kept her composure coming up to the last move the dismount cartwheel not an Arab spring into a double back clean routine but missing a big element in the middle nevertheless superb gymnastics that really her first mistake in the competition a reassuring hug from the coach she says we can overcome that I think and Lisa Grayson, 9.55 on the vault and the asymmetric bars in the second position at the moment. 
Only a better follow for her from Czechoslovakia in front of her. But the beam, the real tester for her. Polokova scored 9.65 on beam. Still maintaining the lead, but it all depends on what Lisa can produce. Third and fourth, very close behind her. Lisa Grayson's total, 19.1. Robin Richter from the United States, 19 dead. And Gergana Pieva off, and she's fallen. Just another point, 0 five behind Pieva from Bulgaria. So that, a vital mistake, automatically knocks her back, 0.5. She's now being marked out of 9.5. Lisa, a very steady performer, generally very confident, but the pressure really is on. Saw her drawing deep breaths before her difficult element, obviously a little bit tight and nervous. Remaining composed for the rest of the routine. This is very important. They put the mistake behind them and continue as if nothing's happened. Gain a flick. working her way to the end of the beam preparing for the dismount an Arab spring double back somersault generally important to land it well just got to the end of the beam but a good landing there from Lisa Grayson just to see where it all went wrong the two back flicks then the straight back somersault and just offline and couldn't hold it And a warm welcome back to Alexandra Palace. And there is the situation in the women's competition there with, unfortunately, Lisa Grayson having dropped to sixth place after falling off the beam, but uh, still hope that she might just get in there with the medal because it's fairly tight. Let's have a look at the men. Gergana Pieva from Bulgaria. 9.4, 9.55, 9.5. An equal third place coming into the final rotation. very important for Pieva, hoping to get into the medals. She was in this competition last year, but wasn't in the top three in the all-around event and eager to get there this year. This could be good enough. And she's improved a great deal since then, as have all the Bulgarians. They had a tremendous Olympics, climbing as a team to fifth place. She was the reserve in that team. Chen Yao, just 15 years old, from China, third equal after the first three pieces of apparatus. Pieva scored 9.7 for her floor. Third equal there, Chen Yao, 9.4, 9.45, 9.65. Beautiful shape for a gymnast. And yeah, very fortunate to know exactly what she's got to beat because she was trying equal third with Pieva before that piece. She must get in excess.
set of 9-7 to get the bronze. Good gymnastics, but not very well matched to the music. And Richter from the USA up in second place after three pieces of apparatus. So going for the silver, what a good sequence. 9.5, 9.5, 9.75 for her. Yes, a very unassuming girl. Came 14th in the trials for the Seoul Olympics. Obviously didn't make the team, but really keen to get into the World Championships team next year in Stuttgart. Back, but both badly landed should be penalised for the run backwards out of the element. competition for the silver medal wide open. Yes, Robin, very powerful on the tumbles, but not so hot on the dance. So the mark could be disappointing for her. Just a couple of scores while we're waiting for the next piece. Kanamoto Makoto, 9.3. Lorna Mannering from Great Britain. She's nursing an ankle injury. She only took one vault, got a 9.4 in the bag and said, I'm not going to risk injury. She's been going very steadily. Had a fall on beam. Robin Richter, 9.5 for her floor. So, somebody comes in with a really good one, Monica. They can overtake that. Lorna. British floor champion, but unfortunately she's not in a position to overtake that, especially there, falling out on that double back.
a high note. Double Christopher there landed well. Well, good finish. But I'm afraid Lorna's competition slipping away. David Cox hanging in there, though. 9.5 for his high bar. And as the competitors move on to their last rotation, we'll take another break. But we'll be back in a couple of minutes for what should be an exciting finale. Don't miss it. And we're building up to the climax of this last major tournament of 1988. And there is the position. With the women's section with Polakova out there in front from Czechoslovakia. Lisa Grayson in sixth place, you'll notice. She was second here last year. She's got an awful lot to do to get into a medal position with one exercise remaining, the floor exercise. Let's have a look at the men, shall we? And it's the Russian... Oksana Emelianchik. And Oksana Emelianchik, a real favourite in this country. She had a disastrous start, only 8.95, sat down on both faults, but then she picked up, she scored 9.6 on asymmetric bars and a magnificent 9.8 on beam. And who knows, she could get a high score on floor and get into the medals yet. If it was anybody else, they'd say that uh, there was too much to do, but she is the former floor world champion and she is absolutely brilliant. Three twists there. when she took the world title along with Trishan over in 85 in Montreal. Now she's 18, but she hasn't lost any of that old magic. Just take a second look at some of this. This the middle tumble run, and she pioneered this. All the top girls in the world now working across one diagonal and going straight into another tumbling run back the other way. But it was Emilienchik who really started all that off. And for me, nobody can do it with... 9.8 just gone up for Emilienchik on the floor. And that could be good enough. We've got to do the calculations. But here, the competition leader, Iveta Polakova from Czechoslovakia. Look at those marks. Monica said earlier that this girl looked a winner from the moment she arrived here at Wembley, and I've got to agree, she looks in superb form. A heel out there. Yes, the ten. They really have been travelling all over the world in the past few months. Double back, and what a disaster! 
Mrs. Holmes, she recovers her composure and a lovely smile. It was so good to see her enjoying her gymnastics so much. But now the reality, what a mistake, she says. That competition was mine in the bag. And now I've got to sit there and wait. Next to go from the People's Republic of China is number 18, Fang Min. And Lisa Grayson, ready for her floor routine. A disaster, a costly disaster on beam. So unusual to see Lisa fall from the apparatus. Lost five tenths on her straight back. Went home with silver medal last year in this same event. She'll really have to go down to even get into the medal this year. National coach Colin still just in the picture with his eagle eye on Lisa almost threatening her not to make any more mistakes really going for it. She opened up with a full in back out, throwing a lovely high double back into the middle. So she's really going out fighting. and a very well-balanced routine between the tumbles and the different tempos. Final, all-important tumble coming up. Well, a good finish there for Lisa Grayson, but what drama in this final round of the competition. The women's leaderboard turned absolutely upside down because Iveta Polokova scored only 8.85 for that floor exercise. And that's dropped her not just from the gold, but right out of the medals. So Omelenchik squeezes up into third place at the moment. And it's Robin Richter from the USA who's in the gold medal position. Competition. There we are then, confirmation of the women's result and the gold medal to the American Robin Richter, who actually finished only 14th overall in the US Olympic trials, didn't she? And there's Gergana Peva from Bulgaria in third place. And Oksana Emilianchik, the Russian who looked out of it, but because of those mistakes by Polakova, gets the bronze medal. Polakova disappears in fourth place. Bit of a surprise, that, because she looked very good, didn't she? I thought she was li literally had no problems then. It just goes to show you that with the competition being so close at the top, right to the end, that you can't afford to make one small mistake. And I'm surprised she dropped so much, but that proves how close it was. Yeah, Lisa Grace, unfortunately, drops. <coughs> Medal ceremony is still to come in this Craft International. But what a competition it has been. Drama there all through the last round. We had a little twist at the end of the men's and the women's competition. Tremendous effort by James May, just getting that 9.55 that he needed to overtake David Cox. But a tremendous effort too for David Cox, because that by far the biggest competition he's ever taken part in. And for him to come fourth in that, a tremendous credit, and he now knows that he can produce the goods. There he is, in the sort of big situation that he needs to. Some gymnasts, brilliant in practice, not so good in competition. But David Cox now knows that he's got what it takes to perform on the big occasion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are the gymnasts, and we now have the winners of the 1988 BHEA Centenary Year Craft International. And they are, for women, with a score of 38.25, from the United States of America, Robin Richter. So Robin Richter from the USA, a tremendous comeback. 
by her, she was very, very disappointed not to make the USA Olympic team, but she was determined that she wasn't finished, and now she's proved it, winning a big invitation international like this. Gold medal for her. And Gennady Zerarov. end off of it. The U.S. women's gymnastics